point is that that is the replica of the Babylonian idea of what the ark and the flood story looked like, which came out of that tablet, which is a kind of recipe to build it. So when you saw that, you wouldn't necessarily leap to that conclusion, but it does underline the fact that it is real writing of real language with real grammar and real meaning and no ambiguity and not a code. So the part of, we have to start in the educational business with a map. This is the most insulting and baby-like map I could find. <laughs> and at once it shows you where Egypt is, which is that brown blob down on the left. And I'm going to be talking about stuff from the blue blob in the middle, which is kind of Iraq. Which, when I started out as an Assyriologist, nobody in this country knew where that was at all. And of course they do now for all the wrong reasons. So writing began, as far as we know, and definitely before in Egypt, in Iraq about 3,500 BC. So if any other speaker this evening floats in front of you and starts talking about Egyptian stuff, hieroglyphs, anything like that, don't believe a word of it if they try to claim primacy. <laughs> now the fact is this, that they used clay which was freely available in a God-given way because the banks of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, which provide the Mesopotamian name invented by the Greeks, um, was perfect for forming writing tablets without bits in it which would take sharp impressions and dry perfectly in the sun and that's what they did. They started with clay and they lasted, uh, they stuck with it until about the second century AD. So well, well over 3,000 years of continuous use. And on the right you see some reeds of the type which grow liberally in Iraq. So you got a six inch bit, cut it at the right angle, stripped off the stuff and there you had a free writing um, tool which would last you for ages. So it was a very simple matter um, and very fortunate that that's what really happened. So this is not going to be an exam or a test or anything depressing like that. There are two points about this lecture. Firstly, nobody is allowed to go to sleep or I shall get very angry. And the second thing is there might well be a test before you're allowed to leave the building. <laughs> now, we have tablets from almost the whole of this history. Now, these are the salient points which I want you to remember and tattoo on your wrists when you get home. Firstly, that this is the oldest writing system we know from archaeology. Secondly, that it began with pictographs, the old-fashioned word, when you do a little picture of something to give you an idea. And the kind of pictures they did were the sort of thing that talented children of three or four, or most average school children, do when they're 17, which is to draw a little blob for a head with an eye in it. And that's the sort of thing they did at the outset. So here you can see on these extracts a drawing of a, um, a, a jug for beer with a pointed bottom, which would stand up in the ground. Next to it, there is a, draw, a pictograph of an ear of barley. And below that, there is a pictograph which has a man's head and a bowl of food, which is the verb to eat. So this is a very simple kind of thing, such as you might expect the Martians to invent or something of the kind. And when the first signs of this kind were brought into use, they had behind, them, behind their, their uh, format the um, requirement to document um, inland revenue kind of matters. They wanted to measure wages in and out. They wanted totals that added up so that really unpleasant people could come and test what really measly people had been keeping records for over the last month. So that plague which hangs over our lives today is responsible for writing it the first instance. And it was certainly not lovelorn poets who took this and turned it into a writing system so they could record their low and lewd desires for posterity. It was a long time, really, before literature trotted along and somebody realised that you don't just use it for this mundane purpose, but it had this brain-opening quality and real writing began and so forth. So those are the first kind of signs. They're rather clear, they're rather easy to understand. Now, this is the worst slide in the world, probably. But the second point I want you to remember for your test is this, that the script evolved graphically in a way which makes perfect sense. So if you look down the left-hand column, those are relatively simple to understand pictographs of the first kind. I'll give you a clue. The three um, Halma pieces are a mountain. The one below that, which is three Halma pieces and a triangle with a slit up the middle, is a foreign slave girl. Get the idea? That's the sort of thing. And 
and they had all these pictographs, and basically two things happened. Because in the outset, in the early phases, they drew with a point, much as we draw with a piece of with a buyer on a piece of paper with a continuous line. And that fell out of use, and they used the cut reed to reduce these curvy form natural figures, as you see on the left, into sharp angular things, which consist of separate strokes of the stylus. So there's a shift from realism to a kind of abstraction, and it's when you get to the abstraction phase that we are no longer really pictographic at all. Um, you don't depend so much on what the sign looks like in terms of origin in order to know what